Hey folks, welcome back to Ohio State Football with Scarlett and Great here on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining us. Got a pretty good show for you here today. We are going to discuss the difference between Ohio State and that team up north's current offseason situation. And uh, Florida Corey is going to join me to do so. And there are a few things that we want to unpack about that, including some spicy rumors about uh, offensive coordinator, former offensive coordinator for uh, you know, the uh, university up north and, uh, and Josh Gaddis. So um, real quick, uh, I just want to go ahead and say you guys have been excellent in helping us grow this channel, especially since the season end. Please continue to do so. All we ask this time, like this video if you think the uh, current Ohio State coordinator situation is better than the – uh, that team up north situation is the Ohio State situation better than that team up north in the coordinator in the assistant room. What Corey and I are going to unpack today is that exactly because there is a certain someone and I don't think this is difficult and I don't think you the best fans in the land will think this is difficult. But there's a certain someone that believes that they're in the same boat or they can't see really the difference in the two. They can't see why Ohio State fans are necessarily laughing at that team up north and what they are going through now with an empty cupboard of, of uh, coordinators right now. I think it's an easy difference to spot. I think you two to do as well. And I'm going to bring in somebody else that thinks it's an easy difference to spot, Mr. Florida Corey. Mr. Florida Corey, how are you today, my friend? I've had a horrible day. You have. I don't. I don't, I don't want to. You know what? You know what happened. I'm not even getting into it. But it was a horrible, horrible day. But it's going to end well because I'm recording with my best friend Johnny Bullet, and I'm going to the gym right after this. So oh, it'll, that... end, it'll end well. Yes. Yes. It will. It will end well. And I do appreciate you being here. And I think you get to work out some frustrations in the gym. And we were just talking about frustration. Who's frustrated? Mm -hmm. Who's having a horrible day? Is and they may not know it. Some people might, may not know it that team up north, and Corey, there was an interesting tweet, right? There was an interesting tweet that said, hey, you know, what's the difference and, yeah. and what Ohio State's going through and what Michigan's going through, and I, <laughs> like I said, I think that it, difference is easy to spot. It's pretty you obvious, know? yeah. It's like spotting an a, a alligator down there in Florida, right? They're, they're everywhere. Yeah, it's pretty easy to spot them down here. Um, in, in fact, you know, right now it got a little cold in Florida. And, you know, if, if you're cold, they're cold. So let them in. Mm. And, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Don't get, you don't want pita on your tail on that. And gator tastes like rubber chicken, by the way. Um, anyway, Jordan Strack, who's sports director at WTOL 11, on Twitter, Jordan Strack, he is a Michigan homer. He tweets, Ohio State changes half their coach, uh, half their coaching staff after getting drilled by Michigan, dot, dot, dot. Ryan Day is a genius. Look at these moves, sarcastically. Michigan has some guys leaving after winning. Michigan is in turmoil. How will they ever win another game? The internet never ceases to amaze me, he says. Well, Jordan, I'm sorry this is a struggle for you, but there are multiple reports out that Gaddis and others might be a little, uh, let's just say, not it might be not, not they're not pleased. too happy with the head man <laughs> yeah well but besides that Corey, besides fine fine being, we'll just get to that point later well no yeah besides I that that <laughs> let's the easiest difference i mean we could end this show in five seconds here we go you know and most people are like really seconds. please do <laughs> <laughs> i mean the quick answer is yes michigan had an up year lost both coordinators mm -hmm. ohio state had a down year and ended due up in the two same coordinators like, i mean they almost had the same they had similar records and yet ohio state was the down year and yeah, ohio was state a down year. year due to the yeah. coordinators or the, the defensive mm -hmm. staff and certain coaches so they had to offload them and got new ones ohio state did the right thing who off michigan had an up year overachieved and still got laughed out of the playoffs, but still then they lost their coordinator. I don't see how this is a difficult, this is a, if, if you, you had an up year, you had to reload. That's not great. That's mm. not great for you. We had a down year and needed to replace people who were directly responsible for the down year. I mean, I don't, 
Uh, <laughs> isn't that really um, easy? It, this is so simple, Johnny. So simple. First of all, I get. I think I do get McDonald lo- leaving for the NFL defensive coordinator position. I get that. I mean, I'm, I'm not even like saying that's Michigan in turmoil. That's just that's him. not. Yeah, that's that's not great for them. But it's no, understandable it's, it's not good why. news. But he's moving on. He, it isn't like he took a parallel position with Arizona or something. He literally just said, "Okay, you know what? I'm, I I got an NFL opportunity here with the team that I was coaching with before I came to Michigan for a year." Mm-hmm. Um, and then it was obvious John was probably allowing him to get that experience as a D coordinator and see how he would fare. And obviously had a good year. And they said, "All right, great. We lost our D coordinator. Let's uh, let's go get McDonald back." Right. They lose a couple other coaches, defensive line coach to uh, USC parallel move. It was a little interesting. And then there was rumors running around that Jim Harbaugh was like peeking at the NFL. Um, and the you know, let's talk about that though, Johnny. Okay. I want to jump into that when when Jim Harbaugh was starting to peek at the NFL. You know, and Michigan fans were kind of in denial about it. Um, he was it was interesting because you know he, he's always rumored to go to the NFL every year, but I think this was obviously the year if he was if ever going to happen, this had to be the year. Uh, did a couple of interviews with Minnesota. There's rumors also with uh, Miami at one time, and um, I, I tell you, it's funny. It got it, the whole process was well, who will be our? It, it became from it went from denial to oh my gosh, this is real. Even Yoder was reporting that he was gone, mm-hmm. and, um, so. It, then who's our next coach? And the Vegas odds were Bill O'Brien, Josh Gaddis, and Matt Campbell were the three likeliest candidates. Two of those being like, oh, gosh. Mm-hmm. Fast forward, Jim Harbaugh has a nine-hour interview with Minnesota begging them for the job. I'm sorry. You can't tell me they weren't in there begging. Just like crawling. On a, he, you never seen the movie Troy where Paris is like begging for his life? I mean, some, the, I have to believe he was at the guy's ankles. Just please get me out of Michigan. And and just and then he and then of course uh, they're gets getting security on him and pulling him out of the building. Took several hours. He held hostages. You know, it was a there's no because there's no interview that actually takes nine hours. No, I mean I don't even know what they were talking about for nine hours. So anyway, the hostage situation was resolved. He goes back to Michigan quietly. They they hire somebody else immediately after he's you know out of his interview. Like get the other guy. I don't see anybody else. Jeez. Anyway. And of course, uh, he comes back to Michigan, and my whole heart's in this. This is where my heart wants to be. Like, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> That's what I say after I interview for another job, too. I mean, it's you know, and that way, no, if you're hitting on another woman, you come back to your wife. Oh, my heart's with you, baby. <laughs> you know? it, it reminds me, I had a dating analogy, and it was because uh, look, and I know you like our my analogies about you know the the, the dating scene in football because there's there's no one that's not convinced Jim Harbaugh would not rather be in the NFL. It's where yeah. he'd like to be. He wouldn't have to recruit. He's an odd guy. Even if you like him as a coach, he's an odd bird, dude. He really is. Hey, he wouldn't have to deal. He wouldn't have to deal with recruiting. He wouldn't have to put his oddness aside in the NFL as much because adults can kind of handle the quirks better. He's just going to be a better fit for the NFL. Not that he'd be a great fit there either. Um, people will like say oh, he's the hottest name in town when we hired him. No, if he was, San Francisco would not have let him go. <laughs> you don't get the hottest name in town. <laughs> he was an exciting me. hire for Michigan at the time. For, for them, yes. Yeah. But he was not, it's not like San Francisco was like, oh no, Jim. Yeah. But anyways, this is like we couldn't match Michigan's offer. This is like you're you're, uh, you're dating a girl and her mm-hmm. ex is back in town. Mm-hmm. And she tells you, "Hey, so and so's back in town. We're gonna." Have and dinner. it's really confusing my feelings right now. Yeah, I'm just gonna tell you. I'm not. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go hang out with him and see how I feel. And <laughs> and we're gonna spend some time together. That'll and then well. they spend some time together, and then they, she comes back to you and says, "Oh, baby, my heart was always yours. It, I'd never want to be anywhere else." And then you know the rumor mill goes around town, and it's like, well, I don't, I don't think he actually wanted to get with her. I don't think he wanted to be with her anymore. <laughs> and she said, "No, baby, no, baby, my, my, it was always you. It was always you." That's how I see this because you're telling me Jim Harbaugh got offered an NFL job and said no. I, I get it. Minnesota's no, he not admitted a great he situation. Didn't get offered, but... What is that like? Is that? Verifiable. But that's the thing he's trying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But it is. But he's trying now to say, oh, my heart's always been here. It's like, shut up, Jim. 
it, you know what? Why don't you just tell the truth? I'd actually respect that if he came out and said, look, I am I would like to be in the NFL, but Michigan's a great job and I'm happy to be here. But of course, my dream's always been in the NFL. I didn't get offered, I'm, but I'm still happy to be at Michigan. And my actually alma mater is a great consolation prize. <laughs> That's how it would look, but no matter what, that's what it is. It looks even worse when you're like, I'm here, and this is the last time, I swear. It's like, okay, and I got to give Carrie Lynn some credit, by the way, who made a meme that this is a one time thing beating the Buckeye. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Give her credit. And, and Corey, so I also want to say to the Michigan fans that think Ohio State fans are like not, I love the Jeff you uploaded of the massive celebration when, when sure. Harbaugh gets rehired. I mean, I nice. want him, and I want him in Columbus in November. Are you kidding? Me? Well, everybody does. I can't yeah. find one Buckeye fan. I d- could someone find me three. I can't find one, but three Buckeye fans were like, "Dang it! I think we would have been better with Jim Harbaugh gone." I- I'll say this: if Josh Gaddis had been made the head coach, I'd be even like, "Okay, this is gonna be even easier." And I thought, "I'd be honest with you." Yeah, I mean, it, it, <sighs> possibly it, because now we're fast forwarding to Josh Gaddis leaving, and he's not—he's not too happy. He yes, so the, he, this he, is the he, differences that you want to get in beyond just... Yeah, exactly. He alluded to he was not appreciated. and he, You could take that a million different ways. He might have felt like he was in line to be the head coach and the administration was like, nah, I don't know, Josh. We might want to go with Mike Hart, the running back coach. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I don't know what it is. He obviously just doesn't... Maybe he, maybe Jim Harbaugh, he say, "Hey Jim, you can take me to the Minnesota with you." And Jim's like, "No, idiot." Do you? It comes do you back. Think oh, it, oh, you thought I was. You thought I was serious. Oh, okay. Do you, Do you think it was as simple as probably how Michigan fans will want to spin it? Is he was going to be the head coach had Harbaugh left? Harbaugh didn't leave, and he got offended that he's back down to being the OC again. Um, there's something there. No, there's something more there because, pretty, because no one would say yeah. I'm not appreciated about yeah, that. That doesn't even make sense. That, that they would, the they would say, Oh shoot, I understand the packing order. He didn't leave them. Um, yeah, yeah. If you, yeah, it's you probably know. more like no raise or yeah. I want look, I'm the, the other thing that, award winner for crying. The, out loud. Yes. That's the other thing. Kerry Combs, not an award winner. Josh yeah. Gaddis, I don't think is a great mind, but somehow won an award because he was on a team that did do well. And, yeah, so it, at least on out the outside appearance can look like losing him. You're at least restructuring, at the very least. Went to a mediocre ACC team. A yeah, parallel, what's that tell you? A parallel move to a mediocre ACC. Michigan is in a better situation than Miami is. There's no question about that. Um, and I, and for I'm being honest there. I'm not even trying to rip Michigan or anything like that. Miami is a mediocre program right now. Uh, Michigan's at least a good program, you know. Um, I won't now, say I will re- say, wouldn't you rather work for uh, Mario Cristobal than Jim Harbaugh? I think the excitement has got to be with Miami, more so than Michigan right now, because the coach has tried to leave. And Cristobal <laughs> is, is uh, you know, Miami alum. I think he's an alum, or at least he coached there or played there or something. I don't know. I can't remember what it was. But he's right. at least got an association with Miami. He's proven himself a pretty good coach. He's a great recruiter. Miami, mm-hmm. he's probably going to clean up Florida recruiting. Um, Gannis can go down there and like, hey, man, I could – I still, I can play. I can, the ACC is wide open with Clemson starting to fall. Mm-hmm. You know, we can do some damage down here because he, even though he wants to talk about Ohio State being in a finesse team, which by the way was a, such a finesse move to just run to Miami, but he wants to talk about Ohio State being a finesse team after he beats us. And we did play if like a finesse team. Don't I'm not questioning that, but at the same time, you shouldn't be running. Mm-hmm. You, you know you're not gonna you're not gonna dog walk Ohio State every year. You know that. And so you know, it, that's the thing, though, Johnny. It goes back to the comparison Jordan's making. This is why Ryan Day is considered a genius for these moves. Is because he said, oh, "My defense is not good enough. I'm not getting complacent." NFL rumors aside, Chicago Bear rumors aside, I'm hiring a defensive coordinator. You idiots! I'm yes. not telling my staff on National Signing Day look elsewhere. I am and hiring a D coordinator. That one of the top D coordinators in the entire country, and I'm paying him two million dollars. I got stingy ohio state to pay him two million dollars and there's no one on my stress you're right there's with jordan's comparison there's no one that looks at ohio state's coaching staff last year and now this year and says they're in trouble they lost carrie combs and al washington a hundred percent no one says that that you could easily anybody whose objective says that after this offseason ohio state got better yes and there, you can easily look at Michigan and go, they went from Broyles Award winner and a very competent defensive coordinator. Young, competent defense coordinator. Could be a head coach. To nothing. Now they got to over. That's an I mean, issue. That's an issue. This late, that that's yeah. an issue. 
So and you hear Michigan fans on Twitter now. Well, we, got to say a huge loss. He might not be, but I just I, laugh. I get he that. He, your head coach like a month or two weeks ago. The he flip flops funny. Coach. Yeah. Yeah. I even saw one say, Hey, uh, coaches are a dime a dozen. It's about having great players. Two points to that. Uh, you but don't your have academic great... system won't allow you to recruit great players. Yeah. I mean, so uh... well, you have a bunch of three stars and you had like the, your recurrent class is ranked in the teens. Um, last I checked anyway. Um, and it's mostly on there just off of bodies. A lot of three. It's your three star. You three stars kicked your butt. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Mervin, trust me, you know how state. It, well, the, the previous clear. <laughs> the previous recruiting classes were better, I think, than this one. Um, mm-hmm. Who was actually on the field? The other thing is, no coaches are not a dime a dozen because Ohio State does have that elite talent, and look how poorly they performed because they didn't have the right coaches in place. Mm-hmm. So, um, yes, maybe Gaddis wasn't the bee's knees. Like, maybe he really wasn't. And, Corey, there's even a weird little – and I'm going to say that this is a rumor, 100% a rumor. Uh, J- Mr. Yoder said he's been alluding to it for a while. Other people mm-hmm. have brought it to me. Um, but with Josh Gaddis and the whole Xavier Worthy news, do you know this story better than I do, Corey? Do you think um, you kn- – al- Allegedly sleeping with his mom. <laughs> right, yeah, I mean, that that's the crux of it. But you know, Xavier Worthy – I didn't. I didn't pay big attention. Time. To story is a big time just, recruit, and we all thought yeah. Michigan botched this because he was an early enrollee in January, right? And you are uh, supposed, you know, you have a scholarship limit, and they did the Michigan thing where they screwed it up, and so the guy who Math didn't get to be uh, the guy who didn't get to be on campus and had to live out in an apartment somewhere, what ended up being the freak talent, right? <laughs> Who's tearing it up at Texas. But anyways, we heard that as a kid would do like, man, you're stringing me along. You don't have a spot for me. I'm done. I'm out of here. And, and, and flipped and went elsewhere because he wasn't a scholarship player at that point. That's huge laughing stock in and of itself. But now the allegation is no, there was a relationship again, allegedly with Josh Gaddis and uh, Xavier's mother. Now, <laughs> First of all, girl? obviously Mr. you girl? messed something up because he was, I guess, living off campus, right? So you probably did screw that the first thing up. He screwed something. The, yeah. But if this is true, if Sorry, this the thirteen-year-old inner child is winning right now, I don't know. The, you're, you, it always wins with you. It always wins with you. If this is true, then I mean, you just have to kind of stop and go. Oh, what? What? How, and we let we let the guy stay. <laughs> what are we doing here? Right. You have to kind of take a step back and look this, at your program this can't and be go. The first time this has ever happened, if it's true, can it? It, it really the can't. first time. Yes. Yeah, the Guinness Book of World Records said it's the first time oh, ever. Okay. Yeah. No, I mean, I don't think it's the first time. Happened. I do. I do happened. love that. I do love the moral superiority I see from some Michigan fans. Like, well, the administration just wouldn't put up with it. Like, this is allegedly from 2019. What do you mean the administration yeah, when you wouldn't, wouldn't put up with it? To put up the administration, who Jim Harbaugh? They, they got some Clemson in them a little bit, and it's like God's chosen, blah blah blah. You know, they they just the moral superiority of some of these people is unreal. It's like it's it's big time college football, whether you like it or not. Yeah, things go I, on. I, yeah, and I'm as an Ohio State fan, I can tell you, I, we're not perfect. You know, yeah, I'm not true. saying that that happens. It's just worth talking about, and especially it's worth. Oh no, talking I agree. About because... I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm not downplaying. You want to talk about? It. I'm just. I just think it's like. You know, it's opening another door to what college football recruiting is kind of like. You know? Yeah, to your point, I don't think it's the first. And and to, to be clear, Corey wasn't saying it's not the first time Josh Gaddis did it. No, what Corey is saying is a college football, a, a college football coach and I'm almost mother. certain Tom Herman has done it. I just <laughs> just a guess. <laughs> you, you want to call him and ask him? Um, sure. Get yeah. Jack on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? Don't give it. Hey. Off season, it's hard to come up with topics. Don't give them any ideas. <laughs> oh no, I want that story. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, Corey. I mean, that kind of brings this to to a head to a close too. That this is the big difference in the Michigan coaching cycle change and the Ohio mm-hmm. State coaching cycle change. Ask anybody. Look, ask a fan base that doesn't wear scarlet or maize. It's pretty easy to say who's sitting in a better spot. I think you'd have to be. Mm-hmm. T- You'd have to be blind not to. 
We have a national title talented team coming back with a competent defensive coach, um, competent defensive staff. The way they filled out the staff has been beautiful because they filled it in with guys like uh, Gary Ayer, uh, Coy McFarlane, and, and stuff like that who mm-hmm. uh, they know they know Noel's system. They've worked with Knowles, and they up top to bottom, they can teach the whole staff the Knowles system and therefore relay it to the players. And we can get a faster than normal, um, you know, adjustment to the yep. new defense. And I really, really think that that won't be immediate, but I think if we, you know, go through our, our early load of a schedule, it's kind of hard. Mm-hmm. Um, if we If we shoulder that load, I think that as the season goes on, barring injury, this, 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 this team's going to get nasty. It's already got the offense. I'm not even worried. And I'm actually excited with Justin Fry yep. already, already on board. And he looks like he's already locking it down, banging it out with Ohio State. Um, I'm excited, man. I haven't been this excited for an upcoming season. It's probably since 2019. And uh, just because of the fact Justin Fields was new, Ryan Day was new, you, you, Halfley was new, you were ha- excited to see what they could do. I know these guys have a track record of success. Uh, it's exciting. And we know CJ Stroud came into his own in the Rose Bowl, and he can only take that next step. Um, Jackson Smith Najigba is the best receiver coming back in college football. Trey Henderson, another year of him. Uh, the offensive line with Justin Fry's uh, on tutelage. And of course, Jim Knowles carrying the whole defense. Right now, if I'm an Ohio State fan, Michigan can say 42 27 all they want. Looking forward into the future, right now, I'd be like, oh man, the Death Star in Ohio State's rebuilding. <laughs> yeah, it, it really is. Maybe Xavier Worthy is the second best returning receiver. <laughs> I, I just know, had to ask, ask, let's ask. Let's ask Josh. <laughs> <laughs> he is awful good. Man, it would have been nice to have up north right now for them to uh, even the playing field just a little bit, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Uh, is that Corey, what they had to do? I mean, now it begs the question what was Harbaugh doing on his sleepovers? <laughs> Did that. Yeah, I, I, I'll talk to you offline about uh, somebody made a really good graphic about that. A buddy of ours. I was actually thoroughly impressed, um, but we'll get to that offline. I, I really appreciate you dealing with this, Corey, talking with me about this and talking with everybody, everybody out there. Let's help grow the show. Please subscribe. If you feel we have earned it, when we get to that 5k mark, we want to do something nice as far as a giveaway for you, the fans. Thank you so much for joining us as always. Goodbye. God bless. You go back. Yeah.